Shabbat Shalom. Morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where the earth you are. Greetings to the 12 tribes that are scattered according to the Bible prophecy into the four corners of the earth. The 12 tribes of Jacob's children, particularly the tribe of Judah, the southern kingdom, out of whom comes Messiah, the line of the tribe of Judah. Greetings to you. Blessings and greetings also upon those that are not of the bloodline of the 12 tribes. But as Gentiles of old in the first century want to be grafted in to the olive tree, which is the scattered nation of Jacob's children, Israel. Greetings. Blessings, first of all, upon the brothers and sisters that are in Haiti. A major 7.2 earthquake just hit 80 a few hours ago. They are not clear on the extent of the damage or of the number of lives lost, only that there has been massive damage and many fatalities. It's amazing. Haiti is on an island that it shares with the Dominican Republic, but it appears that Haiti is always getting beat up. This is a wake up call. And so we pray for the brothers and sisters that are in Haiti right now. Pray for them. And, and if there are any uh, organized arrangements that can send aid from Haitian people that are here in the States, seek them out and see how you can help. I'm sure they're going to need it. May the Most High awaken them and bless their way and prepare them. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Blessings also on those that are working in the healthcare field, trying to save lives, including people that will take trips to places like Haiti to help those that have been injured and sick and devastated by this disaster. Blessings upon those that pick up garbage for us to keep places clean and those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on those that are trying to deliver boys and girls, men and women, children and babies from sex slave, human trafficking operations, child pornography, child molestation and pedophilia and double curses on those that practice these things and support these disgusting satanic industries. Finally, lessons on those trying to help the homeless. 600,000 men, women and children in the United States and the numbers are growing and around the planet, including now places like Haiti, where people either lost their homes or can't afford a home. Blessings upon those trying to help and on those people themselves for theirs is the kingdom. We've been studying Jeremiah and blessings, I'm sorry, and blessings and greetings to those in the chat. Blessings and greetings to all of you in the chat. Praise the most high, how great blessings Isha and brother Walter and Joe and Sister Violet and all of you in the chat. Junior, blessings upon all of y'all. We've been studying Jeremiah. And I don't want to say it's appropriate, but it is appropriate for today, considering the events that have happened. We have already been talking about prophecies in Jeremiah and Revelation and other places because we are living in the time of the fulfillment of final prophecies. Just to give us started, just I want to shake, take us, we're studying Jeremiah chapter 30, and I'm going to do something unusual right now. I just want to read the last verse before we get started. I want to read the last verse of Jeremiah chapter 30. I'm going to read verse 24, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 24. The fierce anger of Yahweh shall not return until he have done it until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it. So whatever is being talked about in Jeremiah chapter 30, it ends up saying, in the latter days, we shall consider it. Okay? We're in the latter days. And it's time for us to consider these things. With all we talked about last night, all of the natural disasters happening on the planet, all of the things going on in terms of, of weather, in terms of heat, fires, 
floods, hurricanes, and yes, earthquakes. This is just the beginning of the tribulation period. All these are the beginning of sorrow. It's also, as it was in Puerto Rico just a few years ago, it's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call. It's time for the Israelite people of the bloodline to first know who they are. It's time for us to know who we are. And also time for us to return to our God. Our God is not Christianity. It is also not voodoo. Those are not our gods. Our God is the creator of heaven and earth. He is one. He's not many. He's not um, nature. He is one. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh. And the root of that is Yah. That's our God. He has delivered unto us this King James Bible for these last days to consider the things that are happening and to know what is shortly coming to pass. He has not revealed this book to anyone else. And I know that sounds funny to y'all because it was Englishmen that translated this book from Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic into English. It was Englishmen that did it, English Catholics. But you need to understand, Translating it is not knowing it. Let me say that again. Translating it is not knowing it. I'll give you an example. Nuclear physics. Nuclear physics is complicated to anybody that doesn't know nuclear physics. And if somebody was to explain nuclear physics in Spanish, the people in Spanish can hear the words, but that doesn't mean they understand nuclear physics. You hear what I'm saying? They can understand the words or the operations of a brain surgeon. Somebody can translate, if it was a Spanish brain surgeon, into English what he's doing, and the English person might hear the words and understand what is being said, but that doesn't mean they know how to perform a brain operation. The English people and the Catholic church was used, and I say used, to translate this book into English. But they don't understand it. It's not given to them to understand. It's given to only the chosen people the only people that this translated book actually says were given the laws and statutes and the commandments of Yah. The only people that this book actually says he revealed himself to. He said, I've not revealed myself to any other people. This book says that. And for those that would try to claim, well, you see, he admitted the white man did it. It's a white man's book. That is totally ignorant. Why do I say that? And I mean that seriously, it's completely ignorant. To say that because a Caucasian people translated this book, what the person is implying is that it would favor the Caucasian people, that there must be some sort of slant to the translation, that it would favor them. But if you read the book, you know it's the complete opposite. It does not favor them at all. In fact, it tells us they're the last people on earth that's going to try to attack the truth. So the argument that, well, it was translated by some Catholic that makes it null and void is a stupid argument, especially if you've never read the book. It's a stupid argument. And we don't have time for stupid right now. The people of Haiti don't have time for stupid. 
We need truth. Here we are in the 2000s, in the last millennium of the history of Babylon. The creator, who's the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end and the in between, he knew we would be here. He knew, he foreknew who his people were. The Bible says he foreknew us. Even at the creation of the earth, he made space, the Bible says, for Israel. He foreknew us. He foreknew us at the end here where we live in the latter days. And he gave us this book. It's not complicated. He gave us this book to get us through so that we will know what's coming. What you're seeing now is a wake-up call. It's the wake-up call to Jacob. That's what you're seeing right now. It's the wake-up call to Jacob. That's what you're seeing. Okay? It's Jacob's wake-up call. Because soon, as we're going to read about today, there's going to be Jacob's trouble. Just like, again, when you read the 10 plagues that came on Egypt, ancient Egypt, when our fathers were in Egypt, before their deliverance, three plagues hit our fathers. Our fathers were affected by three plagues. The last seven plagues only affected Egyptians. And our fathers were delivered in those seven. But the first three plagues, that was the wake-up call. That was the wake-up call. Okay? We're now in the wake-up call. Jacob to wake up. That's what it is. It's for Jacob to wake up. That's where we at right now. Okay? And brethren, what the plans of the people in the higher pet powers of darkness the spiritual wickedness in high places, what their plans are have been revealed to us in this word. It's been revealed to us what their plans are so that we don't be surprised. But their plans really don't matter to Jacob. If Jacob awakes up, their plans don't matter. The creator has everything in his hands. Okay? The time for truth is now. The time for truth and sober, serious truth is now. It's now. More than ever in the history of the planet Earth, it's now. Okay? So we are studying a very appropriate topic for what's going on today. We're studying the time of Jacob's trouble. So I want to first start off reading from the book of Revelation, or how we often read the book of Revelation, because it is the most relevant book to what we're dealing with right now. It is the most relevant. And as we said before, the prophecy of Jeremiah is a precursor, a prelude, a type to what's happening now on a worldwide basis, just like the deliverance from Egypt was also a precursor, a type to the last day people's deliverance. Okay. So in Revelation chapter 13, we know about the beast and we know about the second beast, both of whom being controlled by the dragon. The first beast being the Romish church, the Catholic government church. It's a government church. It's not just a religion, the Catholic church. It's a church and a government. Okay. It's a religion and a government. Vatican City is its own government. The Pope is the head of the government and the head of his church. Okay, followed by and is controlled by the dragon, Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon, which is the devil, gave him his power, his seat, and his authority. This whole world system is built by the dragon in which I can say safely is built 
on lies because he is the father of lies. It's built on lies and murder. When people take power in this world system, how they keep it is by lies and murder. That's how they keep it. Whenever something gets in their way, they lie their way around it and they murder their way through it. That's how they do it. That's how things roll. Whenever there's a threat to the power structure, it gets eliminated. That's how they roll here. And then they have a cover-up following its elimination. People still arguing about who killed John Kennedy. One thing we know, it wasn't that one guy that did it. Everybody should know that. But the cover-up is so deep, you're still talking about it. Nobody still knows who did it. We just found out based on letters and based on um, research and based on confessions who killed Malcolm X. We still don't know who really killed Martin Luther King. We know, again, based on confessions, how Fred Hampton was killed. And yet nobody really wants to face the fact, at least not the majority of the American society, which is your Caucasian, they don't want to face the fact that their own government walked into a black man's apartment and slaughtered him and his people in need. They don't want to even face that. And yet it's right there. So they eliminate the problem and then they cover it up been going on since this founding of this country okay so there revelation chapter 13 the second beast revelation 13 verse 11 and i beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake like a dragon the dragon is dressed as a lamb the lamb represents messiah the dragon is dressed like he's a messiah but he is not Messiah. He's a dragon. Notice lamb is in lowercase l. It's a fake religion that claims Messiah that comes out of the United States. What's the major religion that comes out of the United States that claims Messiah, but is fake? It's Christianity. And remember what the Messiah said to us in, Je in uh, Matthew chapter 24. Remember what he said to us. He warned us of this. He warned us of this in Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 and 5. And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Why, Messiah? Verse 5. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Messiah, and shall deceive many. See, many people get this confused. It's not man claiming to be Messiah. You got a lot of fools out there that do that. No, no. These are people that will come to you saying, yes, Messiah did come and die for your sins. But they're deceiving people. That's Christianity. Okay? So you have a religion coming out of Rome that's headed by one man that is church and state. That's the Catholic Church, the Vatican. Then you got a country that has base of a religion that looks like Messiah, but is controlled by the same entity that gave power, seat, and authority to Rome. It's the devil. See, brethren, it's time to bust the bubble. It's time for the truth. Okay, it really is. It's time for the truth. The United States of America was built on lies and murder. People come over here and murder their way to keep to take this country, take this land. And they have no, the, the real white supremacists, they don't have no problem admitting that. They'll tell you we were stronger. That's why we came and took it. They'll tell you that. If they want to be real. Okay. I think white supremacists are more real than most of the Caucasians out here. Because they're telling you straight, yeah, we came and took it from the enemy. We killed them. Yeah, we enslaved y'all. Because we're powerful. We're stronger than y'all. That's what they say. At least they admit it. Okay? Now, they're going to be destroyed. But they don't believe that. They think they're God. Okay? But that's how it is. At least they're being honest about it. But that's the situation. They came over here and they just destroyed everything and took it and then lied about it. Give you 
the George Washington, I, I did not cut down the cherry tree and, and Thomas Jefferson as some holy man when he was just another slave owner. That's all. He was just another holder and oppressor of Hebrew. That's all. But it's time for truth. You know, it's time for truth. So this second beast is a country that rises up under the same demonic power as Rome. And, and, and let's continue now. Revelation chapter 13. And he exercises, verse 12, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and calls the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. This is Christianity. The first beast is what Daniel described, Daniel chapter 11. This is what Messiah said, the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Let him read it. Whoso read it, let him understand. Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Beginning at 36 of Daniel 11. And the king, talking about the pope, and the king shall do according to his will and shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. Isn't that what we read in 2 Thessalonians last night? And, and exalt him, magnify himself above every God and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor shall he regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate, he shall honor the God of forces. A God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. Listen carefully. Christopher Columbus, Amerigo Vespucci, and everybody like them, when they came raping and pillaging, they came in the name of Christianity. That's the truth. When they came to the shores of this land we call America, when they came to the shores of Boricua, which is Puerto Rico, when they came to the islands of Bermuda or Jamaica or Cuba, they came in the name of Christianity. They came bearing crosses. The God that their fathers knew not, that they honor with gold and precious stones and pleasant things. It is the Christian church. When they conquered us and brought us the tribe of Judah, the southern kingdom from West Africa in chains, through the transatlantic slave trade, they did it in the name of white Jesus. And they would let us get off on Sundays to worship white Jesus, a God that their fathers knew not. And it says, they call him the God of forces. Did you notice that? The God of forces. Doesn't that fit? Because what did they do? They went into lands by force in the name of their God. And they took. And the brother to that is Islam. Because they did the same thing. Muhammad did the same thing. Went into nations. And they're still doing it. They're going into nations like Nigeria by force. Killing and raping and taking. Okay. Same thing, the God of forces, they tied together. And the financiers behind the slave ships, behind the weapons are the banks. That's who finances these things. And the banks are controlled by the Edomites. The Ashkenazi Jews are the Edomites. Work together, okay? They're all being fulfilled right in front of us. Back to Revelation. So he caught verse 12 again, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. 
That means the United States of America is creating a system whereby the government is going to be combined with the Christian religion. You are already seeing it. Just pay attention. They exalt the only religion they exalt. Whenever somebody's not a Christian, they bring it up, right? Like Ilan Omar is not a Christian. She's a Muslim. Now she's in with them. They don't, they don't have no problem, but they make her stick out because she's not a Christian. They make a big deal out of Barack Obama, whether he was a Muslim or not. And he had to actually prove that he is a Christian. Do you remember that? He had to prove he was a Christian. Then they went to his Christian church and, 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 and examined his pastor and, and examined the, 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 the sermon. It's already here. Okay. You got nine Supreme Court justices. Seven of them are Roman Catholic. Two of them are Ashkenazi Jews. Seven Roman Catholics, two Ashkenazi Jews on this most powerful court in the United States. It's already here where they're having a government that's controlled by this lamb-like beast. This lamb-like beast is the government that's being controlled. This is the false prophet. You have the beast, you have the dragon, and you have the false prophet. The United States is the false prophet. The church-state relations, the Christian right, is the false prophet. And people are starting to wake up in a sense that over the last 20 years, if you've noticed, Generation Z, Generation X, those are the young people, the millennial kids that are coming up, they're not, they're not happy with Christianity. They don't know what they want, but they don't want Christianity. You're seeing that already. Now, there's going to be a revival, and you're going to see a lot of them come back to Christianity. They're going to come back to the God that they follow. Okay? You're going to see that. But everybody is getting an opportunity to wake up. It's the wake-up call period right now, y'all. It's the wake-up call period. Financial ruin is happening to millions of people. They say right now that there are 2 million homes in foreclosure right now. 2 million houses in foreclosure. And they're, and, and they're being protected by forbearance right now. But it's about to let be let loose. And you got vultures out here. Believe me, I, I've, had, I've had two houses lost to foreclosure in my life. And I remember even before the foreclosure was official, we had vultures driving up our driveway, taking pictures of, our, of the house we was in. Couldn't wait to come in and swoop it up. You got vultures out there. And they're waiting to throw these people on the street. There's 600,000 people that are homeless right now. That number is going to grow. At the same time, you got pestilence. Killing people. It's made in a laboratory, but it's killing people. At the same time, you got a 7.2 earthquake in Haiti, Jamaica, Japan, sometimes followed by tsunamis. At the same time, you got fires destroying million, millions of acres in the western part of the United States. You got heat that's so hot in Europe, they never felt it like that before. It's already happening. You got floods. Did you guys know about the floods destroying parts of Germany? It's already started. Okay. Um, Rem three, I don't know how what to tell you, my friend. I, that's the only way to contact me at this point. Okay. So try again. That's all I could tell you. I, I got a lot, of, I get a lot of emails. It works for a lot of people. Try another computer or something. So so that's that's the thing, man. Okay. Um, so you seeing everything that's going on on the planet. You're seeing right now people in government showing their greed giving trillions of dollars to banks and then saying they don't want to spend money for the budget to poor people because it doesn't, you know, we don't have the, we don't have the money for that, but they can, they have given, do you realize right now, I'm telling you the honest right now, the federal reserve and the treasury of the United States is giving banks, listen, $1.2 billion per month. That's what they're giving them every month. 
since this pandemic began, 1.2 billion per month. They're funding them like that. And yet they're in Washington telling you people that are poor, people that are homeless, people that are losing their job, we can't help them. We can't help them. You know why? Because those same banks and, and those same corporations, they own the politicians. They own them. They bought them. All of this is happening with all of these other things happening at the same time. It's the wake-up call time. It's the wake-up call. Okay? It's time for the wake-up. It's time for the truth. This is not time to play stupid. It's not that time. Now, you're going to get a lot of people playing stupid and hiding their head in the sand and acting like it's not happening. But that's not going to stop the storm that's coming. And it's not going to save them in that time. Okay? It's not. So now let's continue. Revelation chapter 13. Let's go down to verse 14. 14 and 15. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This goes directly from Daniel chapter 3. It's direct Daniel chapter 3. Just look at Daniel 3 and you'll know what's going on. Nebuchadnezzar made a great image in the plains of Dura. And he had everybody come dedicate the image. And then he demanded that everybody bow to the image. And the Hebrews refused to bow to the image and they were placed in a burning fiery furnace. This is not going to be a, a literal gold image in a plain of Dura. But what it is, is an image, it says, an image to the beast. An image to Rome. In other words, the combination of Christianity running government. And basing its decisions on Christianity. And then having a list, which it already does, of Religions that are acceptable and non-acceptable. The acceptable religions are Islam, any Christianity, okay, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, they're all accepted. Atheism is accepted. It's all accepted. Except one. There is one people on the planet that once they're awakened, they will not be involved with any of these religions. Their God is Yah. They don't need a denomination to worship him. They don't want one. They don't need a 501c3 because they're not concerned with the money. They're going to follow the covenant. The covenant. The covenant of Yah. This is the key here, brethren. This whole thing is against the covenant. The first commandment of the covenant. Let's look at it. Let's talk about it. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth and beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God. That's why Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah would not bow to Nebuchadnezzar's image. And that's why the true Hebrews today will not follow any of these religions. It breaks the covenant. Judaism, every form of Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, Atheism, Judaism, they all serve different gods. They've changed the names. Instead of it called Baal and Molech and Chemosh and Ishtar, instead of it being called that like it was in ancient times. No, no. Today they call it Baptist, SDA, Jehovah Witness. Today, today they call it Sunni, right, or Kurd. Right today, they call today they might call it Tao, or Buddha, or Kabbalah, 
It's just different names for the same false gods. The true Israelites are going to follow Yah. And they're going to keep covenant with Yah. Our concern, brethren, is dishonor to our father. We can only bring honor to our father through obedience. Let me put this very clearly so you don't mistake anything I'm saying. We can only bring honor to the father through obedience. We can only be obedient by the power of his spirit of perfect righteousness. Let me repeat that. We can only be obedient when we are given the power of his spirit of perfect righteousness through Messiah. Messiah is the entryway to obedience. Because Messiah is the representative of the Father. He is not the Father, but the Father sent him to speak Father's words to us and to allow us to be able to partake of Father's Spirit. And the whole purpose of all of that is to bring us into harmony and obedience to the covenant that he only gave to Israel. The covenant wasn't given to the world. The covenant was given to Israel. Let me show you again. Psalms 105. Psalms 105. Psalms 105. I'm going to start at verse 4 of Psalms 105. Seek Yahweh and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Watch. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, and ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is Yahweh, our most high. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Notice there was no Egyptian mentioned there. There was no Greek mentioned there. There was no Edomite mentioned there. Abraham to Israel. Everlasting covenant. Some will say, well, what about the Gentiles? Again, the Gentiles are draft, grafted, who, th those who want to follow Yah, are grafted into the nation through the Messiah. They're grafted into the olive tree of the nation through Messiah so that they become partakers of obedience to the covenant through Israel's Messiah and through Israel. Okay? So Gentiles cannot create their own way to get into the kingdom. The appointed way is through Israel. Okay? That's the appointed way. I know Christianity teaches you different, but like I told you, that's a different God. That is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were not Christians. And they were all followers of Messiah. Abraham rejoiced to see my day, Messiah said, and he saw it and was glad. They were followers of Messiah, but they were not Christians. Imagine that. Revelation again, chapter 13, verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This is where the rubber meets the road. We are now, as I said, in the wake of call time. It's going to come to a time when because we are seeking the covenant of Yah alone, they're going to want to kill us. This is the time of Jacob's trouble. That's where we come to Revelation chapter 14. Because as they are trying to kill us, we will get delivered. Just as Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were delivered from Nebuchadnezzar, 
so will we also be delivered. As Messiah came into the furnace and delivered and protected our brothers, so will Messiah come and deliver us from the clutches of Babylon. If, but we're going to be tested. Our lives are going to be threatened. We're going to be chased. We would not have any earthly support. And the reason for that is because we, all of us, are part of Babylon. There's nothing that you and I can do to separate ourselves from Babylon. There really isn't. I know you want to believe that you can, but you cannot. <laughs> Daniel was in Babylon. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were employees of Babylon. They were in the Babylonian government. But when it came time for the test, they stood firm for the covenant. And that separated them from the Babylonian government. It's the same with us. When they come to try to kill us, when they declare they're hunting us, when they, we will not be allowed to buy or sell, if you're not with the beast, the dragon, or the false prophet, that's your 666. 666 is man-made religion by the beast, the dragon, and the false prophet. That's 666. Man was made on the sixth day. And the devil told Eve, you and Adam, y'all could be a god. That's where you get 666 from. It's the threefold union that's represented in Revelation 16. I saw three unclean spirits come out of the beast, out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's Revelation 19, when the beast and the false prophet were taken and cast into the lake of fire. That is the leaders of the Christian religion, the Catholic religion, and all of the other religious powers, like Judaism, that's trying to control this world in business, in entertainment, and everything else. That's a threefold union. The beast, the dragon, the false prophet. And if you're not involved with their religious powers, you will be considered an enemy. And all you got to do is decide you want to be obedient to the covenant. That's all you got to do. And once that happens, you don't have to worry. They will find you. <laughs> they, will, they will look to find you. And the Most High will guide us like he guided our fathers in the past times. He'll guide us. He'll guide us. And at the end of the day, Revelation chapter 15. Revelation chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Revelation chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of Yahweh. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. Stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of Yahweh. See, the 144,000 have the harps. The rest of the folks have palm branches in their hands. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Verse 9. And after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed in white robes and palms in their hands, palm branches for the Feast of Tabernacles. But the 144,000 will have harps because Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 and 2 and 3. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sing, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 140 and 4,000 who were redeemed from the earth. 144,000 are going to have the harps. All the other brethren are going to have the palms. 144,000 are going to sing this song right here in Revelation chapter 15. Back to Revelation 15. Verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of Yahweh. 
And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of Yahweh, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Yahweh al Shaddai. Great and gr just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Yahweh, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. So there is a time of trouble coming where they're going to seek our lives. They're going to cut us off from everything. And it's of design by the Most High so that all we have is him. At that moment, at that time, when we're out there in woods and in, and in jungles and in deserts and in mountains, in various countries all over the earth, when we're out there, we'll be dependent only on our Father, and He will provide for us. At that moment, for those few weeks that we're out there, we'll be separated from Babylon. That's the final separation. We'll be separated from Babylon. Now, Revelation, excuse me, Jeremiah. And we could go more into that, but that's, again, that's the Revelation series. We did Revelation 2021 20, series. Go and look at that series. You want to find out more about that. I just gave you a quick synopsis because we're studying Jeremiah 30, which relates to it. And so Jeremiah chapter 30 talks about this very thing. And th that's when we're really, see, that's when the powers that are battling in the spirit world Sides are already drawn. At that moment, we have taken our stand with Yah. At that moment, we would have really be separated from Babylon. In that moment, that's when we are delivered. Okay, that's when we're delivered. Uh, you say, well, what should we be doing right now? Right now, we should be seeking our Father, seeking Him in prayer and meditation. We should seek and ask Him for forgiveness of our sins and the sins of our fathers. And we should be asking him for the power of the spirit of perfect righteousness. That's how he declares us righteous. Let me say that again. We are declared righteous, not because we have been righteous. We have been unrighteous, which is why we have been repentant. But he declares us righteous because he covers us with his own righteousness. With the purpose of that righteousness being obedience to the covenant. That's the purpose. So he declares us righteous. And in that declaration, we know, this is what you know about the most high. When he speaks a word, does it come to pass? Is the, is the word of Yah with power? So when he makes a declaration, is it going to happen? That's why the Bible says, he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shah Messiah. He will perform it. What does that mean? He's made the declaration. You have been receivers of his perfect righteous spirit. You continue to receive the righteous spirit. And he has declared righteous you. Not because you're a good person, because his spirit is now on you and the word will happen. And he knows you're going to be brought into obedience to the covenant. It's beautiful, man. That's what I just told you. That's the gospel. That, what I just told you, is the gospel. It's not raise your hand and believe in white Jesus. It's not that. That's not the gospel. The gospel is trust in the perfect righteousness of your father, which is the faith of Jesus. That's Jesus' faith. Father's perfect righteousness is the faith of Jesus. Okay, I got a couple minutes before we go into Jeremiah. Let me show you that because that's important. That's the most important doctrine in the entire Bible. Okay, that's the most important doctrine in the entire Bible. Okay, Romans. Let's start Romans. Romans. That we did a study on Romans. You got to go look at that one. That's on the website. That's on the website. The Romans. Romans. Man, that's what I'm saying. Brethren that don't understand the Apostle Paul, man, you're missing. You're missing some. You're missing water of life. You really are. Ugh, I can't explain it even more. You, you got to really understand the righteousness of the father as the apostle Paul is bringing it forth, man. 
He that's why his books are more prevalent in the New Testament because the Gentiles, he's teaching the Gentiles the most important doctrine they need to know. The Father's perfect righteousness to enter into the covenant with the rest of Israel. His, that's his whole ministry. People misunderstood his ministry, okay? Because he's talking to Gentiles. Like he tells them, you don't need to get circumcised. Hebrews need to be circumcised. Gentiles don't need to be circumcised. The, pr the promise, the covenant of circumcision wasn't to he, uh, Gentiles. It was to Hebrews. That's why he went and circumcised Timothy. But he told the rest of y'all, y'all need to be circumcised. The, the, the covenant of the circumcision was for the Jews, for the Hebrews. But y'all could come grafted in even though you're uncircumcised, as long as you're obedient to the covenant. You understand? Praise the Most High. Romans chapter 1. Let's start with the gospel. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Messiah. For it is the power of Yahweh. The gospel is the power of the Father, Yahweh. Unto salvation, to everyone that believeth, to the Hebrew first, and also to the Greek. For therein, that is the power of salvation, therein is the righteousness of Yah revealed. That's the gospel. The righteousness of the Father being revealed. Why? Because as by faith the Hebrew receives it. And as through faith, the Greek receives it or the Gentile receives it, the father declares it. And when his word declares it, it's over. Okay. The righteousness of Yah revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Chapter two. Sorry. Chapter three. Chapter three of Romans. Romans chapter three. Here we go. Romans chapter three, verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith is saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before Yah. The whole world is found guilty. Guilty of sin against the creator. The whole world is guilty. Okay. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. And this is the key word that most both Hebrews and Gentiles misunderstand, mess it up, and just dog it out so you miss the whole meaning. To be justified means to be declared innocent. That's what justification is, declaring someone innocent. Okay? So like the other day, a woman crashed the car. This is a true story. A woman crashed the car. People came out to help the woman after she crashed the car. She come out the, out the car popping caps in people. Bah, 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 bah. Everybody didn't know what was going on. They were trying to help her. She was in an accident and she jumped out the car shooting. Well, somebody came out the house with their gap, popped her and killed her. Right? And the police said the person that killed her was what? Justified. Declared innocent. Why? Because they were protecting themselves, their family, and their neighborhood from some crazy person that just jumped out of the car shooting. That's justification. Now, the Bible said all of us are declared guilty. We're all guilty. So how do you be declared innocent? Repentance in the blood of the Messiah, the lamb that takes away the sin of Israel and the sin of the world through Israel. You're declared innocent through him. And you receive righteousness from the Father. So that if you're a sinner and you don't come to the Father's Messiah to get forgiveness through the blood of death for you, then you I don't care. You could try to, you could, you know, do whatever you want to do. You can make comic books for kids. You could, you could give to the poor. You could do whatever you want to do. But it's not going to change the fact that you're guilty. Okay. There was a boy named Tuki. Remember Tuki? Or oh, maybe you already don't. He was in San Quentin Maximum Security Prison back in the, in the 80s. And Tuki was a bad boy. He used, to, he used to kill people in the street. But then he changed in the prison. They gave him death. He was found guilty and he was sentenced to death. And he changed when he was in prison. And he started writing kids' books. He write books for little kids. And they became bestsellers, the books he would write for little kids. And people were saying, well, he has changed. Take him out of, you know, take him out of jail, commute his sentence to life. Nope, they put him to death because all the kids' books in the world didn't change the fact that he killed people. It didn't change that. And that's what's being said here. 
By the deeds of the law, you can't be declared innocent if you're already declared guilty. Once you're declared guilty, there's only one penalty. It's death. That's the only penalty. That's why Messiah paid the penalty for the sins of Israel and threw Israel to earth. He said, I came not but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. When he talks about the world, he's talking about the scattered Israelites throughout the earth. Now, you Gentiles, you want to be saved through him? Yeah, you can, but you better come through the Hebrews. There ain't no white Jesus Christianity. That's a different God. Okay? Yeah, there you go. Romans chapter 3. See, verse 20, therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The law of Yah teaches the covenant, shows us we sinners. That's what it shows us. But now, verse 21, the righteousness of Yahweh without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. So the Most High set a, a plan in motion that will satisfy the demands of his righteous law, and the prophets agreed to it. What was that? Watch carefully, verse 20, verse 22. Even the righteousness of Yahweh, this is the Father's righteousness, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. It didn't say by faith in Christ. It's the faith of Messiah. So Messiah's belief, Messiah's belief system is Father's righteousness. Messiah lived his life by the spirit of father's righteousness. If you recall, when he was baptized, the spirit came on him like a dove. Not that he didn't have the spirit, he was born of the spirit, went from the womb. But that dove was the example that he said to fulfill all righteousness. That dove declared him righteous. And we get the same thing when we repent of our sins. The father sends the dove to us and declares us righteous. Through the death of his son, who he sent to pay our penalty. Okay? But it's to bring us to the Father. It's to bring us to the Father. And to bring us in harmony. The whole point in having Father's righteousness revealed is to bring us into harmony with the covenant. To bring us in harmony with the covenant. Okay? So it's called, notice it's the faith of Jesus Christ. Where we see that again? Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians 2.20. 2, Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. For I am crucified with Messiah. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Messiah liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, watch carefully, I live by the faith of the son of Yahweh, who loved me and gave himself for me. I live by the faith of, that is father's righteousness. One more, Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14, verse 12. Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yahweh, that's obedience to the covenant, and the faith of Jesus, the faith of Yahweh Shai, which is what? The righteousness of the Father. So you have to have them both. You can't keep the command. I heard some fool talking about, we keep some keep the commandment, but they don't have the faith in you. No. There's no commandment keeping that heaven accepts, except it's covered in perfect righteousness. That's why they go together. You keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of Messiah, which is Father's righteousness. That brings us into harmony. Now, Jeremiah chapter 30. Jeremiah chapter 30, beginning at verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 30, beginning at verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh most high of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Again, he's speaking to his Hebrew Israelite prophet, Jeremiah a priest of the tribe of Levi. And he declares himself, Yahweh, most high of Israel. Okay? He's the God of Israel. 
The only true God is the God of Israel. The only God the Bible talks about, the only God the prophets talk about, is the God of Israel. Okay? Verse 3. For lo, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith Yahweh, and I will cause them return to the land that I gave their fathers, and they shall possess it. Pretty clear, isn't it? Who is this promise to? Judah and Israel. Why does he say both? Because remember, the nation was divided. Ten tribes were the northern kingdom. Two tribes were the southern kingdom. He kept the southern kingdom longer than the northern kingdom, though both was in apostasy because of his promise to David. And because Messiah was going to come from the line of David. But the northern kingdom was scattered five or six centuries prior in the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was scattered first, and then the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Judah and Benjamin was scattered last with the 70 AD destruction by the Romans, scattered and went into slavery, into the four corners of the earth through slavery, and went into Af what we now call Africa and settled in the western part of Africa, from whence we were taken slaves and sold by Hamites and Muslims, we were sold by Hamites and Muslims to Japheth and to Edom. And they took us for captives from which we are now still here. And now we are awakening as Jeremiah is getting ready to tell us. Jeremiah chapter 30. And I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall possess it. And these are the words that Yahweh spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Again, concerning who? Is it Egypt? How about Greece? Is it the UK? Is it the United States? How about the Philippines? Is it Russia? Concerning who? Israel and Judah. See, what people don't understand, Israel and Judah are a scattered nation. We're scattered into other nations. Yah is going to deliver his nation from the midst of other nations. It's not a religion. That's what people don't understand. Hebrew Israelite religion? No, it's not a religion. It's a people. It's a nation that has a God. He's an invisible God, and he's the creator of everything on the planet. But he's the God of Israel. The nation. Okay? You want to talk about nationalism? That's real nationalism. That's real nationalism. Israel and Judah. That's nationalism. Okay? Let's continue. For thus saith Yahweh, verse 5, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Whosoever would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Whosoever would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For these are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth to the kings of the earth and the whole world, to gather them together for the great day of Yah Almighty. Brethren, you and I are being prepared for that. This is the wake-up call. This is the time for us to awaken, to throw off the foolishness, to come back as Israel and Judah in the midst of all the nations that we are in to the covenant of our God and be declared righteous through his spirit of perfect righteousness by Messiah. 
the lion or the tribe of Judah. That's what I've been. I've been. I've been kind of. I guess I've been. I guess the word is I've been inspired to say to call him that these days. I don't call him, you know, the savior, even though he is a savior. I don't call him the lamb, even though he is a lamb. I've been calling him the lion <laughs> of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> Because that's what he is. Praise the most high. Jeremiah chapter 30. Verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith Yahweh. Yahweh of hosts. That I will, oh this is beautiful. I will break his yoke from off thy neck. And will burst thy bonds. And strangers shall no more serve themselves of him but they will but they shall watch this this is powerful y'all watch this this is powerful man but they shall serve Yahweh their most high <laughs> and David their king who I will raise up unto them David David is the reason that he allowed Judah to last as long as he did David is the reason that he still allows Judah to survive in the face of COVID, in the face of crack, in the face of three strikes law, in the face of lynching, in the face of the destruction of Black Wall Street, in the face of, the, of hanging, in the, in the face of chain gangs, in the face of slavery. This is why he allows Judah to survive. This is why Judah is still going to stand because of his promise to this man, David, who he's going to raise up. You see, brethren, Messiah is going to be king of kings and lord of lords on the planet. He's going to be the king, the monarch of the entire planet Earth. Everybody is going to serve Messiah because of his father, because of what Messiah has done to get us there to the kingdom. But when you come to Jerusalem and you want to come visit the tree of life and you want to walk the streets of the city, maybe you got a place in the city and a place in another another place. Because when you were Israelite, you're going to have it like that. You're going to have your little place in the city. You're going to have your places outside the city, right? So when you come to Jerusalem and you're going to see Messiah, but Messiah going to have a guy sitting next to him. He's the happen to be the one that's the king of Jerusalem. He's going to be headed the whole nation from Jerusalem. His name is David. You're going to get to meet him, David. And then you're going to also see David's Messiah, which is our Messiah. You're going to see all of that. So, man, <laughs> this is what's coming. But before we get there, Jacob's time of trouble. Jacob's tribe, time of trouble. Before we get there, we have to be separated. But we don't worry. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's some that say, well, let me separate myself. Don't worry. <laughs> You're going to be separated as long as you are seeking the righteousness of the Father to be declared righteous by his spirit. You are going to be separated because you represent the enemy of Asatan. Whenever you are seeking obedience to the covenant, the covenant, you are automatically an enemy of Asatan, automatically. And this world is built and developed on the lies of the dragon. So by virtue of you just seeking to be obedient to the covenant, you don't got to worry about it. Trouble's going to find you. <laughs> you ain't got to try hard. It's the, you don't got to worry about where you're going to live. You ain't got to worry about how you're going to get there. The most high, he overrules the Federal Reserve system, y'all. He overrules it. And so when he wants you to be in a certain place, he will bring you in a certain place. You know when Philip came to baptize the Hebrew brother that came out of Ethiopia? You remember the Hebrew brother that came out of Ethiopia and came to worship at Jerusalem like all the Hebrews did? And Philip was sent to him. He said, go near. And the, and the brother was reading the prophet Yeshia, otherwise known as Isaiah. The brother was reading the prophet. And, and, he, and, and Philip said, you understand what you're reading right there? He said, well, how can I understand if somebody teach me? Philip, come up in the, in the chariot. This man, this Hebrew man, was, was one of the main people that guarded Candace, the Ethiopian queen. He was a eunuch. 
for Candace, Ethiopian queen. Well, he had to be a eunuch. See, in that day, you couldn't have a man have all his manly facilities and be guarding a woman. So they had eunuchs do that. Well, this brother was an Hebrew eunuch, though. And Philip gave him the word. Homie was baptized in the name of the Messiah of Israel. He believed in Yahweh, the Messiah. Notice what happened, though. After he got baptized, the spirit caught Philip, sent him somewhere. Yo, you don't think he could do that to us? Anytime he wants. And I mean, anytime he wants. They had our brother Kaffer with 16 soldiers chained up to him. They had him on maximum security. We would call that maximum security. He had a room inside a room inside a room and 16 soldiers guarding him. They wanted to make sure they wouldn't, this brother wasn't getting away. They were preparing to behead him. He wasn't worried about death. He was asleep. He wasn't even up praying. and He was just asleep. Now the brethren was praying for him. Angel walked in there. Chains fell off. He walked right out. Nobody even saw him. And he was gone. You don't think the father can do that to us anytime he wants? Anytime? We're being prepared for that, brethren. We're being prepared for that. Some of us may have to die. Some of us may have to die, but it's all good. It's up to the creator. It's not up to man. It's not up to man. It's up to y'all. Okay? Remember what the apostle said. He received the truth of the gospel by revelation of Messiah. He didn't receive it of man. He received it by revelation of the Messiah. Beautiful thing, isn't it? Beautiful thing. Jeremiah chapter, chapter 30. Verse 9, but they shall serve the Yahweh their most high and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. All right, let's keep going. It gets better. Therefore, fear thou not, my servant Jacob. Jacob, time to wake up, saith Yahweh. Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. See what I say? And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall make him afraid. Why does he have to say that? Because when they come in to kill you, you're going to be scared. I'm going to be scared. I mean, just, you know, be honest about it, right? Somebody coming to kill you. I mean, you hear the guns. You hear them clicking. You hear the cars coming. They're coming after you, right? You know they want to kill you. And you can't trust nobody. Your own cousins, your own uncles. They're going to tell you, tell them where you are. <laughs> oh, he right over here. This is where he lives. I ain't got nothing to do with it. You're going to see it. Your own neighbors, people you have helped, they're going to dog. They're going to turn you out. They're going to, what we used to call it, they could drop the dime on you. They're going to drop the dime. That's what we used to call it when I was a kid. They say you used to drop the dime. Why is that? Because it used to cost a dime to make a phone call. Say when somebody was turning on somebody, they said, oh, he dropped the dime. They're going to drop the dime on you. So now it's a quarter. <laughs> they're going to they gonna drop the dime on you. They snitch you. They're all going to turn you in. It's all good, though. You're going to be delivered. The Most High knows how to deliver his people. But we're going to be scared. That's why he says here, once we get delivered, we're going to be afraid no more. Nothing's going to scare us ever again. Nothing. We'll be at rest. Be at rest. Nothing's going to scare us ever again. Praise the Most High. Verse 11. For I am with thee, saith Yahweh, to save thee. Wait a minute. This is important. Verse 11. Though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee. But I will correct thee in measure. It will not leave thee altogether unpunished. You see, Jacob, wherever we've been scattered, all these places that we can't get our equal rights. We can't, we can't be equal because they're always keeping us oppressed. They're going to be destroyed. Every system that has oppressed us is going to be destroyed. He's going to make a full end. They're going to be heaps when he's finished with them. And only those Gentiles that have connected with Israel through the line of the tribe of Judah, they're going to survive. Let me say that again. The Gentiles that have connected with the nation 
through the line of the tribe of Judah, they're going to survive. You Gentiles hear me? That's how you're going to survive. Because most of y'all and all the sellouts, all the sellouts, y'all know who they are. All the sellouts out here working for the government, undercover claiming to be for us, and they really against us. They're going to get what got, they got coming. Sellouts going to be counted among the false prophets, and they're going to get what they got coming. See, brethren, this is time to be real, man. This is time to be real. This ain't time to be, this ain't time to be faking, man. Although my words are gonna fall on deaf ears to those who are given over to try to to try to get rich in this world, to try to rub shoulders with the powers that be, with the spiritual wickedness in high places that want to be in the private jet and want to hang out with those type of powerful people. You can have that, and most of them gonna take that. Enjoy it. You only got about 10, 11 more years. That's all you got. That's all you got. That's all you got left. Yeah, you don't believe me. It's all good. The Most High knows those that are his, and everyone that departeth iniquity is following Messiah. It's all good. Ain't that much time to enjoy this. Enjoy it. Enjoy your, enjoy your, your, your privilege. Enjoy your supremacy. Enjoy it. You ain't got that much time left. Because it's coming to a close. He get ready. He said, I'm going to make a full end. This is the father speaking. I'm going to make a full end, he said, of all the nations whether we have been scattered. He's going to make a full end. And you know what? Y'all know what happens when father comes through. He sent his angel to come through. It's going to be a problem. Messiah coming in righteousness to make war. The line of the tribe of Judah ain't playing. He roaring. And when he come, he coming through. Okay? We know this. We ain't worried about it. He said, I'm going to make a full end, but not of you. Praise the most high. Verse 12. Jeremiah 30, 12. For thus saith Yahweh, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. Isn't that the truth, brethren? The Hebrews, our wound is incurable. That's the truth. Look, honestly, there is no reparations we can be given now that's going to satisfy. What are they going to give us? I counted just on a preliminary basis. And I, and I was very conservative about it. I counted how much in these, in these fiat US dollars they'd have to give us as payment. Now, we're not even talking about, we not, see generally when, 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 when companies get sued, right? They're sued for back pay, right? Right? I'm telling the truth, right? When they get sued <clears throat> by somebody, they get sued for back pay if it's an employee and then they get sued for damages. Pain and suffering. Isn't that correct? I mean, am I right? Isn't that how they do it today? So when you go to court where somebody loses their job and they weren't supposed to, they get back pay plus interest and they get pain and suffering. Okay. On just the back pay tip. Let's just talk. We're not even dealing with the pain and suffering because y'all couldn't handle that. But on the back pay tip, if you're talking about from 1620, 1619, and you're just talking about slavery from 1619, and, and I gave it all the way to 1865, and then you're talking about not being able to own your own home because you can't get a mortgage because they were giving mortgages, government mortgages, to the Caucasians for about 100 years before we got it. And then when we did get it, it was always higher interest rates, but we're not even talking about that. But let's just call it 300 years. And I said, let's be fair. Let's say it's a dollar a day for 300 years. And let's call it 2 or 3% interest, not even high interest, right? They would owe us hundreds of trillions. That's just back pay. Hundreds of trillions. You're talking about 5 million people working six days a week 
12 hour days for 300 years. You can't pay it. You don't have enough ink to print in your Federal Reserve to pay it. You ain't got enough ink to print to pay it. And that's not even including the rightful pain and suffering deal we should get also. So you can't pay. So what does that mean? We're depending on our father. He's going to make a full in. He's going to make a full in. He's going to come through and make a full in. He's going to make it right. Don't you worry about that. He's going to make it right. There's going to be nothing left here. Okay? He's going to take it all destroyed. You can't make it right. There's nothing you could do to make it right. Only thing y'all could do who are, who are descendants of them people is repent of your sins and the sins of your fathers and come into the nation through the line of the tribe of Judah. That's all you could do. There's no way you can make it right. You can't make it right. It never will be right. Okay? That's why we're depending on the Father. He is going to make it right. When he come through, when Messiah come through on that white horse, he going to make it right. He going to make it right. Jeremiah chapter 30. Our wound is incurable. We have no healing medicines that can help us. Only the Father can help us. Verse 14. All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy and with the chastisement of a cruel one for the multitude of thine iniquity because thy sins were increased. Yes. There's no healing medicines for us. We are wounded like we was enemies because of we were enemies of our Father for a long time. But praise Yah. He is now awakening us in these last days, in this last decade before it's all said and done. He's bringing forth the word of truth. Okay, bringing forth the word of truth and giving us the true gospel of his perfect righteousness in Messiah. To declare us righteous and prepare us to be separated from Babylon. To prepare us to stand on the sea of glass, praise the most high Yahweh. Okay. And there's more. I, I ain't finished Jeremiah 30. We're going to finish it in the next session. I ain't finished it here because I don't want to rush through it. Okay. We had to go through that stuff in Revelation to understand the import of what we're dealing with here in Jeremiah 30. So I want to just, I want to stop here, come back from verse maybe 12 and start again. But praise Yahweh. Brethren, we are living at this time. It's a beautiful time to be alive because we are about to see the transfer of power from Asatan to Messiah Hawashah and from Babylon to Israel and Judah. Praise the Most High Yahweh. I pray that the Most High bless you and keep you, that he lead you in paths of truth and enlighten you with his light up through Messiah the line of the tribe of Judah. And I pray that he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and that he would lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please, please pray for the brethren that are in Haiti right now. Pray for the brethren in Haiti. And if, and if it comes across your path, if a Haitian brother or sister has a way to get funds or to help them in some kind of way, pray that the Most High will help you. We'll come back. It is now 1251. We'll probably come back at about 130. And we're going to at 130 Eastern Time, Washington, DC time. We're going to finish Jeremiah chapter 30. We just this is just part one. We're going to do part two uh, after the break. We're going to take a little break. I'm gonna have a little something to eat. And we'll come back and get into the word again. Praise the most high Yahweh. I want to thank all y'all that came in the chat. Praise to the most high Yahweh for you. And uh praise the most high Yahweh for all. Uh 130 Eastern Time. Um, um as a Raya, 130 Eastern time. We'll be back 130 Eastern time. Yeah, we'll put it out there. Praise the most high. Please continue to pray for us that we be faithful to the call of the righteousness, the faith of righteousness that we are also teaching, that we don't be teaching the others and ourselves be cast away. Praise the most high. Shalom.